How do you feel about the impact of uh, Darwin's work and the, I would say misappropriation of the concept of survival of the fittest when he actually talked more about the symbiotic relationships of nature and how nature um, creates balance within itself and the, the harmony, nature itself is driven to <coughs> harmony through balance and the evolution in a balanced way versus Western society has really taken on this, I must step over everyone to rise to the top for survival of the fittest. But that very mindset shift is maybe a pivotal part and how do we get back to a more collective, um, harmonized yes. viewpoint? Um, yeah, thank you for, for that question. And I do think that is so important. Um, and we do go into it to some in some depth in this book from the earliest days of Darwin's theory to how that got sort of misappropriated, just as you said. Um, so Darwin didn't ever talk, he, he didn't even use this phrase, survival of the fittest. That, that, um, some of his, his followers sort of took that and used that um, afterwards. And then in more recent generations, or in more recent decades, I should say, um, we hear, if you ask people about evolution, they're likely to say, oh yeah, it's the selfish gene because Richard Dawkins has done such an amazing job of popularizing what is an absolutely unfounded myth <laughs> that has got nothing to do with what modern biology shows. And, and this is, I'm not a biologist, but I've read countless um, articles and books at this stage by leading biologists who just explain <coughs> step by step how this notion of the self-esteem is totally untrue. And, and in fact, um, well, for, for starters, there's not even, even talking about a gene as a separate, discrete entity is kind of a mistake anyway. But to the extent that there are genes, um, actually they are part of the network of connectivity within the, D within the DNA, which is then within the cell. And the way in which evolution occurs is nothing to do with this concept of some kind of selfish gene. And so what I do feel is that there are certain underlying myths that our modern civilization is built on. That if we, to go back to that original question, if we're going to uh, move towards a future of real flourishing, we have to recognize those myths and, and change them. Mm -hmm. And one of those is this notion of, um, of both a selfish gene, and another one that goes along with that is that humans are fundamentally selfish. And, um, and that's what we're meant to be, and that by humans all acting selfishly together um, by some invisible hand, by some magic, that creates the, mo the optimal um, scenario for the most flourishing of humanity, which is another of these made-up myths, which isn't even what Adam Smith said, ne um, never mind the, the sort of, um, some of the, the invalid foundations that comes from. So, I do think these are important elements that hopefully come out through the book to recognize um, some of these unfounded myths uh, we think about.